Let's go back to absolutism. In France, it took hold in the mid-1600s and Louis XIV came to the throne. Famous, among other things, for his totally stylish high heels, flowing robes, and luscious curls, he called himself the Sun King and proclaimed Le Tot c'est moi, or the state is mine. He built a fancy palace in the countryside called Versailles. Not only was it very pretty and expensive, but it drained power from the nobles as they were too busy partying and eating and being rich to pay attention to politics. The lavish lives of the nobles made the third estate, the lowest of the Ancien Regime's estates, very sad, especially the peasants who starved while the nobles had daily feasts. Also part of this estate was the sans culotte, literally no pants, or no fancy pants that is, since they were so poor. Possibly the most discontented was the bourgeoisie, or middle class, who became very rich but had no power to complement their wealth. The second estate was the nobles, who, as I mentioned earlier, loved to party. They spent their wealth on gluttony, outrageous hairstyles, and garish clothing. The first estate was the clergy, who had a huge influence on the Catholic country and were quite rich themselves. These upper two estates did not have to pay taxes. While this class struggle did contribute to the revolution, the direct cause was France's overall economic suckiness. In 1776, France was meddling in a revolution in another continent, offering both military and financial aid to the colonists, mostly to defeat France's frenemy, Great Britain. The large amount of money spent on the American Revolution led to debt. And this led to unaffordable baguettes. And this led to a lot of unhappiness. But most importantly, the growing economic crisis forced the broke king Louis XVI to call the States General, which hadn't convened in almost 200 years. The States General was a legislative body composed of all three estates, each with one vote. The clear problem here was that the first two estates would vote against third estate interests. When the third estate suggested to tax the upper estates and a new voting method, the upper two estates were, were pretty mad. The next day, the third estate was locked out of their meeting room, but nothing stands in the way of democracy. Thus, on June 27, 1789, they marched across the street to a tennis court, proclaiming themselves the National Assembly, never to disband until they wrote a new constitution. France was about to sneeze.